Hallelujah. Hi, my name is Natasha Holland and I would love to talk today to you about my new painting. This painting is about Father's glory. And I received this painting in His glory. I received it from heaven. I received it when I was in the Spirit. In my prayer time, in my uh, meditation time, I receive all my paintings like this. And this painting is talking about light. You, you can tell this, yes. And this glorious light of Father. It's creative light. This is this kind of light when you go in, things are happening. When you go in, things are creating around you. Uh, when you go in this light, you meet with Father, eyes to eyes, you know, you can see Father. You can come so close, so you can give Him embrace. You can receive Him embrace, His embrace. And you can get this Father's cuddle, Daddy's cuddle. This is a place when you uh, take... Um, Sun, you know, you can see on this painting uh, as a figure, uh, and this is a figure of Jesus, and he taking by hand a little boy, and he actually taking him and he walking towards this light, which is Father. So I saw it in the spirit, and I, and first I saw myself as this child. And the father walking with me, uh, father Jesus and father is one figure, as we can say. We know that uh, Trinity is one. And as Jesus said, if you saw me, you saw father. And if you see me, you see father. So first, when I started uh, this painting and I painted, uh, I thought, this is a um, child who represents me or any uh, person uh, and Jesus is taken to Father. And as I go on, uh, go forward with this painting, the thoughts start to, uh, I would have a conversation with the Holy Spirit and the thoughts coming to me and it's saying, you know that now you are not this child, now you this figure, Jesus. You know that you came to this earth to represent Jesus here. You came to this earth to be Him. And uh, you came to this earth to represent not just Jesus, to represent the whole Trinity. You came to this earth to represent um, Father. Son and the Holy Spirit. That's why Bible says the one who united with the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. And you remember Revelation, uh, I think it's Revelation 12, I double check, and it says when this woman, she had, uh, she was pregnant and she was having a birth and she given a birth to a child a man child interesting child but man not boy uh, not a little boy but man uh, not an infant you know but man and I believe it's talking about a man who's become son uh, you know how Bible is talking about that the all creation is groaning and waiting for the sons to be revealed. So, uh, nation waiting for sun to be revealed. And who is this sun? Sun, I believe it's one whose uh, spiritual eyes are open and they recognize that Jesus is in them. Not just by words, not just because it says that he is in you, but in reality. Re in reality, when they take in that, uh, th just as the Bible says, you know, when they take in it seriously, seriously and take this responsibility to be Jesus, take this responsibility to be on the throne and to be ready to walk on this earth by Father, allowing 
father to walk by by you, by me, by us, by any person. Hallelujah. That's the father's dream. Um, and the theme I wanted to touch today is the theme of dream. Father's dream. I wanted to talk. And, uh, and father's dream, I understand um, that to build, to return this Eden on this earth. Uh, and my dream, my personal dream, it's the same. My dream is that the Father would create through my hands. My dream is to create uh, and, and dancing in front of the Father like wisdom. You remember how it says that wisdom, she was dancing, she was rejoicing. Uh, different translations say in different ways, but she was rejoicing in front of Father. She was dancing and she was creating this Father. So that's my dream. I want to be that wisdom who creating here on earth and that dream of father that every son everyone who understood their role as a son here on earth that they would create even here on earth hallelujah and that's amazing that's such a great and wonderful responsibility that's an interesting task that's an interesting role be creative here on earth Hallelujah. And you know how many Christians expecting that things are going to be worse and worse and worse. And that's the thing what happening, you know, when the earth is groaning, this groaning of the creation, it seems to be like giving birth to the, those sons. I even can see that uh, this woman, you can say it's a different, another interpretation. That the first I was always thought it was a church, but now it came to me a different interpretation. Just right now, like a revelation that this uh, woman who had inside it's us. Our earth is groaning and uh, ready to give birth to son, sons, who creation is expected to be born. But it's also said that father been taking them and put them straight away on the throne because it, it was a, a red dragon who wanted to swallow them. And I believe that this red dragon, it's a um, religion, a spirit of religion who taking sons and keeping them under the table uh, and they sitting under the table and it's a great feast table with father prepared uh, and and there is all this celebration there because the kingdom of god at hand jesus said when he just came but now it's here kingdom of heaven is here on earth if you are sitting in christ on heavenly places then celebration is going on already and you are those sons some of those sons who still sitting under the table and collecting those crumbs father is saying enough enough it's enough come out out of this table and i have this poem where he actually um, <laughs> slap his food but not because he angry but because uh, he is fed up of of children uh, collecting those crumbs and being blind they are sitting this vision i saw when they sitting under the table christians i would come to to meet my father in my uh, vi visual contemplation and usually we would have a table full 
feast and lots of food and angels and father there and I would usually see myself sitting near father and give him hugs and cheeses and Holy Spirit and uh, sometimes I see myself as cheeses or sometimes I see myself near cheeses and uh, we would enjoy this feast and I would see those things. You could say I imagine them. This is godly imagination and it's good. We should use our godly imagination to have those kudos uh, and uh, these kisses with Father. And as we do this, you would feel, you would know how the Holy Spirit will come on you and you would, you would just receive all sorts of things. You would receive freedom from anxieties, from sickness, from anything. This is real. You know, when you do this, this heaven, you actually get into supernatural um, heavenly places. You supernaturally um, walk in it as you do this. You do it in your imagination, which is a contemplation, which, which is... Um, becoming a vision by the Holy Spirit, but it's become a reality, a spiritual reality. It's just a little explanation when you don't know about those things. It's very common that uh, Christians, in ancient Christians, Catholics, they did this, practice that a lot, and many Christians practice this. So don't be afraid of those visions. Do not go into evil visions. Do not allow evil thoughts come to you. And uh, if they come, just uh, reject them. But good thoughts, everything which is good, that is from God. And bad is from devil. That's so simple and so easy. So, Father doesn't want children to be under the table and collect crumbs. He wants them to come out. And I saw in my vision how angels was, they was um, um, blowing the sofas uh, and tried to wake the children, but they can't hear. The ears are closed and the eyes are closed. And I said, Holy Spirit, um, why don't you call in them out? He said, we, we do, we're calling them out. And then I saw those angels but they don't come out. And they're collecting the scrumps, not realizing that they're already in the spirit realm. They don't realize that they sit here next to Father. Father is near, right there, but they're not seeing Father there. That was my vision. And uh, when their eyes are opening and they see Father face to face, that's when the son born. And when the son's born, father wants to take these children and sit them on the throne straight away. And uh, who awakening those sons, uh, the, you can say a baby man's sons, that's you. Those whose eyes already open because blind cannot uh, walk with the blind. That's what the Bible says. So we take those sons. Father, take with our hands. That was on this painting. When the Jesus walking with the son and taking him to father's throne, to a place where father's sitting in father. Son, go and sit right in father. That will be done with your hands. That's not when Jesus come with a uh, big sore and... Uh, just wave and everything stand in the right place. No, that's you. You are Father's hands. You are Jesus' hands here on earth and you're going to do this. And that's what Father's dream. The children's eyes will be open. They sit on, on the heavenly places in Christ just the way it is. Just the way it's Bible and the Word of God says about it. And they are building Eden here on earth. And I know that um, Bible uh, talking about, um, you all know the scripture I'm going to read now. Father calling us to perfection. And uh, you know Paul in uh, Hebrews 6 
1 and 2 he is actually saying, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrines of baptism and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of the eternal judgment. Uh, and later on he is saying, but if it's needed, then we do that as well. So what he is saying actually, that those things, it's just a beginning. It's just a beginning of what Christ was teaching. And he is calling church to leave this aside. Why? Because perfection is expect expecting us. And that's what I wanted to talk today. What is that perfection? He's talking uh, raising from the dead. It's just the beginning. Why? Healing, sickness, it's just the beginning because we sons, those whose eyes are open and realizing that you are on the throne, since like seeing, since like um, being sick, how would I would say, that's, keep talking about that stop singing, uh, keep on preaching about you should not sing any longer. That's something a very, very beginning. That's not even needed anymore. Because when you sing, it's not even in your mind. It's just gone. It's gone. It doesn't bother you anymore. It's not yours. You are in heaven. You are sitting in Christ, you are in the feast. That's not what we should talk about. We are talking about perfection. We are calling a uh, call of God to talk about perfection. And he's saying, let us go on unto perfection. Perfection. What is perfection? And that's something I wanted to address today. I believe that this painting is actually showing what perfection is. Perfection, it's been in Father and in His love and in His light. You know how the uh, Bible is saying that glory, glory, there is a big church in front of the throne of the Father and they're saying glory, glory. And glory of God is fill the whole earth. And people would look at earth and they would say, well, 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 I cannot see that glory. Because you're looking through the eyes which are on earth. Earthly sinking eyes, you know. But when you're sitting on a throne and you're looking on everything through the eyes of Father, you see glory. You see glory. Glory, glory. We are not talking about those things. It's not that we not deal with it. If it's needed, we will deal. If somewhere that silly snake come out and lift his head up, I will come and I step on it with the sandal of Jesus. And that reminds me of one of my mm, vision with Jesus was a uh, contemplative vision which I was talked to Jesus about this and I said to him you know if snake would come out uh, I would not like to step on it with my sandal um, kind of his head big and he still can sting me and then he said no 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 it's not how you think about it when you think of your sandal you think of Jesus Think of very big and tall Jesus, and that's you. Think of you, and that sandal, it's a big, huge sandal. So you make Jesus very big, and you in Christ. And then you think of snake as a little worm, little, little worm. And then you come and you step on it, and you smash it. Pfft, nothing left. That's how you think of it. So when someone like this come out, and you have to deal with it, you will deal with it, because your feet, when Father sits on a throne, his feet, they are 
um, our earth, it's a footstool of Father. So his feet are still on the earth. So when you in Father on heaven, in heavenly places, this earth is your footstool. <laughs> so that worm doesn't matter. You just easy, easy deal with this worm or whatever worms. No, no demons. No, they are in somebody's head. You easy deal with that. You just change your mind. Change your mind to the mind of Christ. All demons gone. I promise. So all we need is renewing of our mind and look at things through the eyes of Father and through the eyes of Jesus. And remember that you have the mind of Christ. And then when you look at everything, it's easy. It's easy. It's when, you, when you realize that Father and you are one, and that's what Jesus was saying. You remember that moment which I keep on talking about all the time when I preach in English, that uh, when Jesus said to Philip, when he said, well, come on, show us Father and uh, finished. And that's it. And he said, Philip, don't you know? You surprise me, Philip, you, you really surprise me. Don't you know if you see me, you see Father? He was easily saying that. So, and we as Jesus, as us, he said, since you do, I did, you will do, and you do more than I did. That's one thing. Then he said, you in me, I'm in you, and we're all in Christ. And Bible keep on repetitively saying that. Through, through all, put all the scriptures together, we know that Jesus and I are one. And if Jesus and I are one, then as Jesus said, Father and I are one. And the one who united with the Lord is one spirit. Holy Spirit and I are one. So who am I? I am God here on earth. Yes, you are God's Father said. And if you do not realize that, if you do not realize that, you will die like a man. And Jesus repeated that scripture when he spoke to Pharisees, that you are gods. So, that's if you want to be proven by scriptures, uh, the lots of lots of scriptures proving this. Hallelujah. God who born from gods and creators who born from creators. You are creator and you call to create and be creative. Hallelujah. Creativity, that's what we're talking about, and perfection. We were, we're called to perfection. Uh, Pavel telling us, leave all those things. They are earthly, but you are now in heaven. You are in Christ, in Father. You're sitting on a throne. You are uh, before the huge table, feasting with Jesus together, celebrating this great... Um, Sapa, wedding of the bride, who is no longer bride. Yeah, I, uh, many people would know that um, in Israel, uh, in Jews' um, understanding, especially in an uh, older age when Jesus was there as, as a man, when he was walking as a man on this earth, it was actually tradition when his mother, she was being um, a bride to a father, uh, to Joseph, uh, who is earthly father, we could say, of Jesus. And uh, they were engaged. But you remember, he wanted to divorce her. Remember that in the scripture. That's because um, in Jewish tradition, when you become a bride, at the same time, you sign a paper that you are wife, right? That's one thing. So, as you call yourself bride of Christ, that's right. But, as you in Christ, you became one for a long time ago. You became one when he cried out, it is finished on the cross. It's exactly those words when a Jewish groom taking bride to a chuppah, this place 
when everything happened and they become one, he is open up window and he crying out, we win with um, shit. Uh, and he's saying, it is finished. And he's showing that she's innocent. Yeah? And that Jesus, he done this blood for us to show us innocent. Isn't it amazing? Amazing revelation. So he's bright innocent, first of all. No spot, no wrinkle, no nothing by his blood. And he took her to a feast right there, right then. He made her ready then. It is finished. So when we, on this wedding feast, we're already wife, we're already apostles. I remember when I read uh, Jeanne Guillon book and she's saying that this time when you became become wife, it's a stage when you an apostle, apostolic uh, uh, stage of your Christianity, uh, new level. And I would say that's when sun, when the eyes open and you became sun. I know it's like too much of everything uh, to think of, but let's just, <laughs> maybe I, I am kind of too many revelations at the same time trying to give you, just because all this inside trying to be given to you, to give you, to, to understand that you are son, that you are ready, you already ready for your eyes to be open. You are already ready to be the son who need to be born, who need to go and sit inside the father and father give everything all to you. And he said, son, everything which is mine is yours. It's what he said to his um, oldest son. And remember when youngest came, the first thing, he didn't even eat anything, he didn't wash yet, he gave him a, a nice, beautiful clothes which allowing him to rule, and he gave him rulemanship, and he gave him a reign as a sign that he can rule and reign. That's what father did, and that's what father wants you to do. He wants him to take this place to sit on the throne and rule and reign over this earth and make an Eden here on earth with the Father, with, with the Holy Spirit, as Christ. Walk on this earth, make beauty around you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you get this revelation and when you understand that, nothing can stop you nothing your mind is become wide and the mind of christ start to revealing through you from glory to glory and how do we get there how do we release this uh, perfection how do we get to know his love because his perfection it's his love which we get there that's what all this painting about this light this Light is his love because it's Father. Father is this light. He is this love. But he says also, you are the light for this earth. Which is mean you are the love. You are God. Who Father placed on this earth to reveal himself. Father God. For everyone who don't know yet who they are because all of them are sons only they don't know that they are sons of God each one and he loves them and he wants them all hallelujah hallelujah and creativity and arts that's the form through which father will, will release and releasing his love that's why all arts belong to father and they serve father and they will serve serve father all eternity and i see the scripture i prepare love never ends as for prophecies they will pass away as for tones they will cease as for knowledge it will pass away but love never pass away and to me 
creativity that never pass away because love release itself in many many angles and in many many ways and creativity it's a mean tool which father use to show his love and he use our hands our hands becoming his hands to speak from him in creative way and yes, people uh, create, they use this uh, creativity. You know, uh, I believe everything is creativity and I believe there is no non-creative people. For example, when, when you create organs, that's cre creativity, yeah? When you create new heart in people, that's creativity. That's father does through his uh, sons, through people through those who allowing him to use, uh, he give us this power. And you remember when Jesus is uh, leaving and he says, since whatever, whatever I did, you will do, and even more you will do. But when he left, he said, go and do it. <laughs> so, uh, and some people think that, um, at this moment, uh, healing and uh, raising from the dead, uh, those things are very important, but creativity are at later on, it doesn't need it. It's not that important. And I would say, that's what Paul talking about. Yeah, I come back to the scripture again. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. So not laying again the foundation and doctrines of baptism and resurrection of the dead. Um, laying hands for healing, I believe, isn't it? Uh, why, why he's saying that? Isn't it so important? Yes. And we will do that if it will need it. I already said that before. So... We live in the sins because it would be time when it, it, it no needed anymore. It's just as simple as that. The prophecy um, taunts uh, all that resurrection from the day it needed when it's there. When you need people to be healed. But sons, when they in heaven, they come to the stage when they no longer need uh, healing. A perfect health. That's possible. That's possible. I'm not going to doctors for many, many years. I consider myself to have a perfect health. And obviously, immortality, it's something many people don't know, that immortality, that's uh, ability of God. And God is in us. That mean we have ability of immortality. You immortal. You've got DNA of Jesus in you. That's another thing I briefly mentioned, but it's a different theme altogether. And one day I will talk about it more. Now I come back to the theme I am covering, the perfection. And this perfection which um, Paul is calling us into, that's perfection. It's heaven. Heaven here on earth. And that's a dream of Father to build Eden here on earth and that's what you call for and that's what we're going to do for eternity again and again and I don't know if any of you read this book um, uh, by Rebecca Twingle if I'm not mistaken uh, what the book and I, I will give you some um, details of this book so you can uh, come back and read this book I just recommend absolutely amazing my dream of heaven yeah that's the name of the book she is talking the, about a group of young people when they came to a house they were building um, her house young teenagers who is in heaven already and they're having a great time and they um doing some forms of art which is not known here on earth how do we get scenes from heaven 
how do we get things uh, here on earth? We get ideas from heaven. We get them from the spirit. But they, they will, I just want to explain a little bit about what they were doing. They were creating this, um, it's like roses. And they put them uh, in, uh, they put them on a the wall. They kind of placing them on a the wall, on the floor, but they seems to be alive. I don't know how they do. It. They like three D, you know, uh, and that was amazing. And they um, not just like a dry plant. They were a living plant, and they placed them. And uh, you afraid? She said I was afraid to walk over them to spoil. It. But if she walk, she wouldn't spoil them. So that's a kind of secrets of heaven, which we get into know little by little i believe that all this what's going on now with um, uh, technology we all receive from heaven and all architecture going to be uh, amazing amazing thing uh, architects will be um, brought up uh, in a such a way that we will build an amazing buildings why don't we start here and now today my dream is to dance in front of Father, and I'm already doing it. Uh, when I say dance, it's not necessarily dancing, but be happy, rejoice in front of Him. Even so, I love dance in front of Father when I put music. That's amazing. It's a language of dance. But when we received our uh, house, uh, and it was a council house, and... Um, those of you who English, you maybe know in what state it could be. And as I making it is a beautiful place, uh, I was calling, this is my little Eden. So we can create a beautiful place right here, right now, here on earth. Because this earth is groaning, is a pregnant woman expecting for sons to be born and as she groaning she's given a birth of those sons and i had these conversations with this with the earth when i was um building my little eden around me and this garden been in such a state i was taking out those glass you know uh, bottle glass window glass rubbish um uh, clothes, all clothes, shoes even. It was amazing, whatever whatever horrible stuff I've been taking out. And I said, I'm cleaning you. You, you earth, you, you are going to bring a beautiful plants. You're going to give birth to these beautiful plants for me. I was cleaning this cuts stuff you know which been going all over my garden and I've been saying no you are not going to do this on my garden I place angel or angels all around my garden to look after it to help me this not place for you and you know now my garden is the best garden in our street hallelujah I created my Eden here on earth i created all around me i like when it's beautiful around me and what it would be if each person uh, on this earth would start to create their own eden how beautiful it would be and you know when this my vision of um create uh, and uh, being have this um art for god ministry it's been given to me a while ago it's been given to me in the year 2000 i knew that with my art i will serve the lord i knew it and uh, a bit later on in 2006 i had a revelation it's going to be not just me it's going to be all arts and then i i knew that arts belong to god and I thought in my mind how it could be happened. Um, it's, it will take years and years and years to change art because art, if you talk about fine art here in England, fine art is in a such a stage. It's, it's, it's just so demonic. I've been teaching young children in um, Catholic schools and, and 
GCCs and A level we've been doing, um, and children just it's blood. They paint blood. This darkness. And it's just horrible. Really, what's in their mind? Their mind need to be changed. And I thought, how it is possible? I, I, I seems to didn't see the way out, you know. But when I became in this um, movement, which called um, Heavenly Civilization, and our leader is Andrei Yakovishin and his wife Olga, when I came to this um, people, got to know those people, and my eyes, uh, through this teaching, my eyes start to get to open more and more and more, and I understood who Son is, that Son is Jesus, Jesus who revealing himself through me. I realized that's not that difficult. As soon as your eyes open, as soon you as soon as you realize that you are here to reveal God on this earth to allow him to walk by you to change things through your hands to look at this earth with the eyes of father to bring his love towards people as soon as you realize that things are happening automatically it's just easy it's becoming in my mind it's became that's not that difficult. That's easy. For God, it's easy. For human, it's impossible. Till I thought of myself as a human who is a Christian and loved Jesus, it was impossible. I was expecting, come Jesus, come, come. I am bright who is crying and waiting for you till you come with this fiery soul and you wave it and everything done oh you maybe you take me away while it's been doing and burning all else let everything be burned and i be there celebrating with you hallelujah just let me not see all this wall that was my was my thoughts and now we all wanted like that, yeah, we was believing in this fairy tale, but now all my thoughts are completely different. My mind changed. I see myself not as this poor Christian who has got nothing, no strength, no power, no nothing, nothing happening. Whew. Even so, even then, I saw things are happening, actually. I saw... Um, people being healed through me and I already lived it's because I believed that I had power in me but now even more now when I realized who I am who am I a son of God is in me and I am the son of God Jesus who walking here on earth because I allow him I let him I thinking of me as him and him as me and when I'm thinking of myself like this since I start happening with speed speedily <laughs> and I know that father father who is changing things around me and as all of us would think like this not a poor church but church who is has a head, a real head of Jesus. And if you have head of Jesus, who are you then there? That's a question for you. If your head is Jesus, who are you? If my head, Natasha, who am I? If I'm talking about my human figure, Natasha, who am I? Natasha, I'm full from top to my heel, I'm Natasha. And if my head Jesus, who am I? I'm Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can talk long about it. But what I am here trying to say to you, rise up, get up, you are the Son of God who seated on a throne in heavenly places, you're already there. You were born 
for that. You were in Christ before the foundation of this earth. You are creator who born from creator. And I'm saying to you, create. Son, create heaven on this earth. That's Father's dream. And you have wisdom. You are that wisdom. Because Jesus and you are one. And Father's and you are one. You call to make beauty, perfection, love. You call to release love of the Father on this earth. Whatever way you would create. And if other sins needed to be done, we do that as well. Create Creator. I love you. Thank you.